2018 is not even a week old and we are already dealing with an incredibly touchy subject. Of course, I'm talking about the upcoming Mercy nerf that is currently being explored on the PTR. Now, for everyone who's been watching me for a while, and especially for those following me on Twitter, you'll know my stance on Mercy as a hero. I never make it a secret when I dislike a hero or a specific meta, and I'm very open about my opinion either way. But the world does not revolve around me, so in the night that these nerfs hit the PTR, I decided decided to reach out to my community with a poll, just for the sake of it. And just a little over 1000 people decided to cast their vote on the question, what do you think of the Mercy nerf? Now, quite admittingly, the way that this poll was set up is anything but scientific. I just tossed it out there without much thought behind it, but the results were fairly interesting. And so were the comments that accompany the votes. We got an almost clear-cut 50% between people who rejoice over the thought of the Mercy nerf and 50% who... Well, didn't. For somebody who is as vocal about his dislikes as me, you would think that these votes would have a higher tendency for the first... <laughs> for the first? What the hell? We eat every day. For somebody who is as vocal about his dislikes as me, you would think that these votes would have a higher tendency for the first, but that could not be further from the truth. The community that we have gathered around this channel is, in fact, something that I take pride in. We have grown into a very versatile community that loves one thing specifically, discussing their opinion. I challenge people to disagree with me in my videos because I'm not interested in a bunch of yaysayers who never challenge my opinion opinion. And just like that, my comment section is often a place that thrives with discussion and changed my opinion on many things in the past as well by providing unique viewpoints and arguments that I have not thought of. And that's why I put so much value into these 1000 votes, because people have no reason to blindly follow my opinion and they have displayed over and over again that they don't. Again, nothing about this is scientific, but I think it could still be very interesting to discuss it. Because if you go to any social media platform of your choice, then you will see a split like that in many places again. People who are very upset and people who are very happy. And I don't think that we have seen something like that in the history of Overwatch, when it comes to meta changes in particular, I mean. It certainly is a testament to how popular Mercy is, but the question stays, was the Mercy nerf needed? Again, you'd know my response to that, but what about the others in the community? Taking advantage of the YouTube community tab, again, I reached out to the Mercy mains among my subscribers to ask why they disagree with the nerf and what they would do differently. Now, before we get into the results of that, I think there are a couple of things worth discussing first. For example, the parties that are involved in this back and forth of arguments. Going by social media and the forums, many Mercy players seem to be under the impression that the opposing faction mainly consists of DPS players and that other support players would agree with their stance. Furthermore, many of them labeled themselves as support mains, even when their hours would suggest them to be Mercy mains or even Mercy one tricks. Likely because by now, being labeled as a Mercy main or one trick is seen as an insult. What's also pretty interesting about this is that now Mercy players cry out saying Blizzard only listens to the minority of DPS players complaining on Reddit, when previously that exact faction accused Blizzard of keeping her in the meta for as long as they did solely for the reason that they only listen to the majority of players and the fact that Mercy is so popular. Depending on what kinds of people we like to surround ourselves with, our perception of what should and shouldn't be changed and our perception of what is and isn't okay changes. I've seen many arguments saying that there are many more pressing issues that need solving than Mercy's current must-pick status coming from the camp of Mercy supporters. And these people seem to genuinely be under the impression that the majority of the community would agree with them. Now, let me mop up the first misconception. Not every support main is in favor of the Mercy meta. Quite the opposite is the case for many of us. In fact, not only in my circle of friends, but also extended to my community and even further going to other communities and social platforms, you'd witness a distinct dislike for the fact that those players who previously enjoyed playing heroes like Ana, Lucio and Zenyatta are now forced to play Mercy in this current meta. And even in game, particularly in higher ranks, you can witness this struggle of support players who are being forced onto the role of Mercy and voice a very clear dislike for having to do that. Mercy, to many, just is not a very engaging character to play and that for reasons that I believe to be 
fairly obvious. So no, this is not an argument between DPS and support players. This is an argument between Mercy players and Mercy supporters and, well, those who oppose the current meta and Mercy's must pick status. Now that we've figured out who's taking part in this discussion, we can start taking a look at some of their arguments. And once you do that, you can see that there's a very clear disconnect from many Mercy players to well, reality essentially. But in that same vein, many arguments from the opposition are very obviously rooted in emotion rather than reason. That means that not every argument is to be trusted from either side and we should try to focus on those who actually have a point to them. A big point of contention has always been the level of skill required to take Mercy out when using Valkyrie. While many, albeit obviously not all Mercy players, like to discard this argument with the notion that the opposition simply is not good at the game, which is ironic indeed, there is a merit to that that is based on objectivity. Fact number one, Mercy's hitbox is very small. Number two, it becomes deceivingly big when using Valkyrie thanks to her massive wings. Number three, the netcode in Overwatch is anything but supreme. Any hero using some sort of speed acceleration or movement alteration ability is subjected to certain anomalies. Genji's triple jump in the past and Lucio's wall ride shenanigans to date are a testament to the fact that hitboxes in conjunction with movement altering abilities are behaving very oddly. Now put all three together and you have a very slender hitbox that seems bigger than it is, rubber banding all over the place at speeds that will make Lucio jealous and you can objectively assess that yes, Mercy is very difficult to hit in Valkyrie. And if that is not evidence enough to you, what about the fact that even professional hit scam players, yes, those dudes that make a living by being really good at this video game, have trouble shooting her out of the sky. If even professional players cannot do it reliably, how can you argue that it's easy and DPS players are just supposed to do it properly? Well, you cannot. And especially if your name is Blizzard and you care about balance all across the ladder, expecting low rated players to pull off feats that surpass acts of professionalism would be downright insane. The next point of contention surrounds her current must pick status. While many argue that she needs a nerf, others argue that other supports are supposed to be buffed to her level. Argument being that nerfs make characters less fun to play and they propose that this might just display that other supports are underpowered. This is again something we can argue against. The ability to revive players is objectively extremely powerful. And many Mercy players feel like taking that away from her makes Mercy, well, less fun to play for one, but also borderline useless. And I don't think I have to explain why balancing a character around the most powerful ability in video game history is a dangerous path to walk. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. The fact that Mercy is as prevalent as she is only proves how powerful the ability to revive others is. And if we take a look at comparisons being made between her and other support ultimates, there's always something that they gracefully ignore. It is the act of gaining access to that ultimate in the first place. Looking at Zenyatta and Lucio, for example, there are distinct differences between good and bad players. Good players get their ultimates faster because they religiously dish out a ton of damage. Their defensive capabilities are a reward for showing offensive prowess. Her der mercy takes no skill jokes aside. Even if you compare good and bad mercies, the act of gaining access to Valkyrie remains the same. It is limited to holding left click. I'm not here to argue the level of skill required to play mercy well, but fact is that no matter how good you are at mercy, at the end of the day you get your ultimate by holding left click on your team. You cannot accelerate or decelerate it by being really good or being really bad unless you start arguing with some positioning nonsense. Which in the case of Mercy, it would take you to be an actual idiot to run out and throw on purpose to stop yourself from getting your ultimate at the same pace as most other Mercy players. Given that fact, Mercy's Valkyrie is not supposed to be more powerful than B-Drop or Transcendence. It makes absolutely no sense. Mercy has been rewarded with one of the most powerful ultimate abilities in the game for a level of effort that does not justify its impact. The rest token and zero cast time revise were a freebie that could fundamentally change the course of a team fight. Mercy was holding more power in her hands than she had any right to in the first place. Suggesting that every support should hold that level of power in their hands is absolutely insane. And in the case of Mercy alone, it already is insane. Her ultimate still lasts longer than B-Drop and Transcendence combined. She can still provide healing or damage acceleration for the entirety of her team from a safe position. Even without the two free reses, it is a powerful ability. And dare I say that the comparison is nonsensical 
Lucio in the first place. Lucio and Zenyatta are utility based off supports while Mercy is a main support. Ultimate or not, Mercy provides a level of sustain outside of her ultimate that the other two simply cannot match. Yes, the nerfs make Mercy weaker as is the nature of nerfs in the first place but making it look like she's suddenly a good for nothing is complete nonsense. It is important to bring her effectiveness more in line with the level of effort required to do the things that make her effective. A good Mercy is still going to separate herself from others by showing expertise at all the other things that you can do better than others. But if your effectiveness is entirely bound to getting two free reses with little effort then you're probably not a good Mercy in the first place. Again, yes, if the nerfs hit life as they are on the PTR right now then she's going to be less powerful and subsequently less picked and that is the point. If you cannot accept that Mercy as is right now is too powerful period and especially too powerful given the level of effort required to be as effective as she is then in my opinion you're downright delusional. It is fact that players have skipped multiple divisions in a single season by playing Mercy alone in this current meta and this does not even necessarily affect Mercy mains in particular. I have seen so many players who swap to being Mercy mains specifically for this meta so they can take advantage of the fact that she's broken. And these players contribute to the bad reputation of let's call them dedicated Mercy mains because these players get into a rating that they have no chance to make a significant contribution in once they swap off of this character. And it's not even a mercy specific problem, it's something we have seen whenever a hero was overtuned and not reworked for too long. Junkrat is the best example of that too. But oh boy, now I've let you wait all video long to get to the conclusion of the previously mentioned poll and accompanying question I sent out a couple of days ago. And that's solely in the name of context, so let's hope that it was worth it. The result supports nothing of what I have proposed so far. According to the comments under both of these community messages, as many Mercy mains as non-Mercy players felt that the changes were too harsh. Celebrating the fact that Mercy is being nerfed period seems to largely be a very emotional response to the fact that we had to endure this meta for as long as we did. Teamfights are messy and unnecessarily extended, players got tired of playing ass and against Mercy and overall a breath of fresh air seems to be direly needed. There there are a number of extremist kinds of responses of course but many comments suggest that while Mercy needed a change this might not be it. It seems like players have trouble agreeing on one sole culprit for this whole discussion whether it be her effort to value ratio, Valkyrie as a whole or her level of mobility and subsequently survivability. In today's video we have chewed through a number of arguments surrounding this whole debate. It is obvious that I as someone who is fundamentally against resurrection as an ability in Overwatch would find a lot of arguments to support the case that the mercy nerf is necessary. Now if you are truly invested in this debate then I suggest you go out and find yourself someone who argues in favor of mercy to get a better understanding for both sides. As much as I can try to play my own devil's advocate and try to pretend that I am a mercy supporter for just long enough to make a video I will never be able to come up with the same arguments that someone would who is truly invested in that idea. But I hope that at the end of this whole outrage you found yourself enough information from each of the sides to form an educated opinion. And until then, this is me done for the day. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more. And I hope to see you all next time.